Now, somewhere beneath the oceans of the world, there is a British submarine carrying 16 Trident missiles, ready to retaliate against a nuclear attack on this country. With the current debate about whether this, the most powerful weapon in the nation's armory, should be renewed, the politics show sent Giles Dilnot to take a closer look at one of Britain's most closely guarded secrets. In a hangar by the Clyde in Scotland sits a British weapon of mass destruction, the newest of our four Vanguard nuclear-powered missile subs, and it's vast. This boat has the deepest draft of any vessel in the Royal Navy. That's including aircraft carriers. So let me just give you an idea of the scale. Big on the outside, but for obvious reasons, that's all most of us have ever seen. To really get an idea of what it's like to live and breathe at the sharp end of Britain's independent nuclear deterrent, you need to get inside a submarine. Let me take you on a tour of HMS Vengeance. Inside, you share the tight labyrinth of corridors with pipes, wires, weaponry and the crew, who are effectively locked inside for three months at a time. Isolated from home, they dive once and surface only at the end of their patrol. And during all that time, their chief authority is the captain. First and foremost, I'm responsible for ensuring that the platform and the strategic weapon system on board are always at the required readiness state as directed by the government. Uh, I'm also responsible for the safe operation of a nuclear reactor, which powers the submarine. I'm responsible for the safe custody of 16 Trident missiles and the warheads that are held on top of them. And also responsible for the welfare of uh, 160 individuals uh, and the pressures that they're under during a 90-day uh, patrol. Not for nothing do these crews see themselves as an elite, living side by side with silos of nuclear weapons all sitting on top of the reactor. But then that's the whole point. In terms of Britain's independent nuclear deterrent, this is about as close as you can get. 16 missile tubes, each containing one Trident II D5 missile, capable of carrying multiple nuclear warheads. All of this goes towards what's called the continuous at-sea deterrent. Well, what a submarine offers uniquely is an absolute assurance that no matter what the nature of an unexpected attack on the United Kingdom, there is always at least one submarine which is entirely undetected uh, and therefore entirely safe to respond as directed by the UK government. XOR we all wireless office. If the order to fire missiles is received, the boat won't know the target and can't destroy the missile once away. The message is carried shoulder high so crew know not to impede its progress. My job is to ensure that this platform is ready to respond to a firing message from the Prime Minister. Um, the decision to fire or not is a political one made across political departments and, and has nothing to do with myself. Captain, sir. Captain, sir, this is a correctly authenticated fire control message. I concur. But Check once control. the order is sent, this procedure will be carried out to the letter. Quite literally, the boat sails with a letter from the Prime Minister held in a safe, giving the captain the authority to fire when ordered. Stations, stations, no one on board wants to see this through for real, but that's their duty, and the CO is sanguine about the human side of being the guardian of such responsibility. WSRT. Command wheel, weapon system in condition one is Q for WSRT. WEO has my permission to fire. It's something that I think most submarine commanding officers relish, that level of responsibility. It's what we joined up to do. And that's all it takes. A click. And... One away. MD61. The irony is they've never fired in anger. Who'd want them to? But it does mean that day-to-day -day life on board doesn't revolve around nuclear Armageddon, but something far more crucial. Food. Well, is the chef the most important person on the boat after yourself, of course? <laughs> after myself, very probably. Yeah, food is incredibly important. Clearly, it's fuel to enable us to work. But also, they can tell the day of the week. Uh, for example... Wednesday is always uh, curry day, uh, and Saturday is always steak night with pizza on a Sunday night. Alongside, we normally cater for roughly 45 people at sea, maybe 160 plus. Depends, 160 really. plus every day, 
Pretty for much, 90 yeah. days yep, non-stop. Pretty much. What time is there in the day for you to do anything other than sleep and cook? Um, not much really. Well, you've got to love the job to do it. You get a little bit of information from home, you know, two 60 word messages and uh, you know, anyone out there, try writing 60 words to your loved one. What about, you can't write anything back, nothing. No, it, it, sometimes, you know, you are away for a, a long time, but I'm, myself, I'm quite actually used to it. It's, it's, uh, it keeps you going, those 60 words, you know, it's like a text message, just to know that people are still thinking about you, but I, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm fine with it. When, and if, let's hope it never happens, one has bad news, that can take place a world away from where you are yeah. and, and you just don't know. I mean, that must be hard to deal with it, as well. It is, but um, we're such a, a tight community on board that, you know, everyone's free to speak to each other, everyone will help each other out, you know, uh, it is... You are a big family. Yes, we are a big family and we all stick together and look after each other, otherwise it just wouldn't work on board. Which is just as well, because in the cramped confines of their quarters, never mind swinging cats, there's simply no room for the claustrophobic or the intolerant. Hiya. If things do get too much, then there is at least a doctor. One with a small surgery and, well, very little else. They know not to get ill. <laughs> just no one just wants to don't get ill. <laughs> I gather the worst thing is if they get toothache. It's, uh, yeah, it's very scary for them, uh, especially with such a long time away. Because uh, you're it, not a dentist. No. Um, well, I am at sea, and uh, I've had uh, a grand total of two days training to do that, which uh, was basically damage-controlled dentistry, so I wouldn't want to come and see me. <laughs> Self-deprecation aside, the fact that life aboard is an endless rotor of six hours on duty, six hours off, demonstrates the sacrifice made to keep the boat ready for its purpose. The crew are happy to let society and politicians decide the morality of their weapons. They'd just like opinions to be as informed as possible. It, it has been a, c a case in the past where people's knowledge of the specifics of what we do and what's entailed and what those 160 sailors have to go through to deliver the deterrent has not been possibly understood as well as it could have been. Some people say, I've heard many times say, the problem with the nuclear deterrent is, you know, you can't fire it without the Americans say so anyway. Is that true? That is absolutely untrue. It is an independent nuclear deterrent. It is a UK-owned national asset. So at no point do we rely on GPS or anything that isn't nationally owned. At home, there is a debate about Trident and nuclear weapons. But remember, as it takes place, somewhere hidden in the oceans is a UK submarine that never sleeps.